I bet this is probably the 50 second video that you've watched about vision techniques, someone telling you about the best technique to work, to memorize, to study, to stay focused. There are just so many different techniques. And the main reason for that is because we are all very different learners. No two people learn in the exact same way. And that is something that we have been conned into thinking is true all throughout our academic Ex you know, experience from primary school all the way up to secondary school and university. We've been told that sit down, highlight a book and memorize and sit your exam and that's gonna test your understanding. And it doesn't always work. So I'm here to give you today three different revision techniques that you can use and implement within your studying over the next couple weeks and months in the run up to your exams. And these are all techniques that are super easy and that can help you if you're an auditory learner, if you are a visual learner, if you're someone that wants to kind of add some more active recall into your work and your revision, this will help. And if you want to see more like this, and don't forget to press the subscribe button to see more from me, and let's get started. Okay, so the first technique is using transparent sticky notes. And I know lots of us use post-it notes and the standard, you know, the yellow, green, the blue ones, and um, orange ones, but these are transparent sticky notes. And that means that they are slightly see-through, which means that you can use them to do some tracing, and for your revision notes and for your flashcards. Now, one reason why this is really um, useful is because it builds, it kind of builds on a couple of different techniques and a couple of different research points for reading and memorizing. So, although it does take a lot of time, let's say you have uh, this book, it's about all and maxofacial surgery, and you've got this, I don't know, and something to anatomy, let's see. Okay, you've got this sort of anatomical structure um, and it's a sagittal section of the nasal cavity, right? And you really want to have this in your revision notes. And you wanna have these in your notes that you can use and take around with you, um, but kind of drawing it freehand is not ideal and won't be quite accurate. You can use these transparent sticky notes. So all you need to do is, and I'll put my quick little reel here that I did earlier um, last week and shared on Instagram, but all you need to do is trace over um, your textbooks and then insert that into your flashcards. And a flashcard here, for example, something like this, which has the the sticky notes added onto it and then the flashcard and you can take it around with you if you have like a bunch of them. And this is really helpful because even though it does take slightly longer, it really embeds it into your memory. And the thing that we need to always think about when thinking about revision is adding active recall um, opportunities into your revision. Now, I could have sat there and just looked at this image and just tried to memorize it and said, right, what's that, what's that? And yeah, that could have, that could work. But a much better way of embedding information into your long-term memory is actually doing it yourself. So the fact that I drew that out and labeled it myself and looked at all the different areas and understood where they all sat meant that I gave attention to all of it. And so it really means that this is going to be part of my long-term memory now. And it took me slightly longer, it's part of my notes. Um, I can color it in, I can make it look pretty if I want, not necessary at all, but it just means that you now have active recall put within your revision, not just within the actual note taking, but actually in the revision itself. Okay, the second method is a technique called the Fein, Feynman, I think it's called Feynman, as I pronounce it, the Feynman technique. And this is a technique which is all about getting a much deeper understanding through being to explain any concept to let's say a 12 year old. And the whole premise of this technique is the fact that you are able to explain really complicated, in-depth concepts to someone that doesn't have that same understanding to you. So you're able to break it down into its parts and then explain it to someone else. And by doing that, you are able to get a more deeper understanding of what it is you're learning. And again, embed that into your memory. So there are four main key points and four steps to this technique. Number one is choosing a concept that you want to learn about, that's the first step. Explaining it to a 12 year old, so explaining to someone that does not have your background and your understanding. The third is to reflect, refine and simplify and the fourth is to organize and review that information. And whilst some topics you can just memorize it and you can just recall that in the exam, there are loads more, I mean the majority I would say of the concepts and understanding that you need to kind of pick up is that you need to fully, fully understand it. You need to fully understand what it is that you're reading, you need to fully understand why it is that 
a certain concept exists, right? Let's just take biology for example. You can understand um, the chemical structure of something, of a particular um, protein for example, but if you don't fully understand why the bonds are the way they are and how that then reacts and um, links to other proteins and or why this happens and what, what happens in that pathway, if you don't fully understand it, then all you're able to do is say, yep, that links to that. And that your surface knowledge, and that isn't how you're, you're able to really learn and understand and get those top grades. So when writing out your text to, you know, for a 12 year old, you want to make sure that you're removing any like any kind of jargon that means any words or any keywords that are subject specific so you want to make sure that you're making it as simple as possible now it's even better if you have a 12 year old in front of you because that means that you're able to actually get their live responses and teach them teach them okay let's just say photosynthesis right really basic teach them what that means teach them what it is and explain that right there's glucose okay glucose they're not going to know what glucose is imagine it's just sugars right it's just sugar they know what sugar is and now you know what sugar is and now it's in your mind as well and now you know that that's the bit that provides the energy so you haven't just memorized the the you know the formula for for photosynthesis or the equation for photosynthesis rather you've actually understood right so glucose does this and then that does this and the fact that you've had to explain those parts to a 12 year old in as basic language as possible means that you now understand it as well so try to like implement this as much as possible i know it sounds silly and i know it sounds a bit like this how is this going to help me i used to teach all of my <laughs> this is embarrassing to say but i used to teach all the concepts that i was learning um, at GCSE level or even A level or even at university to like teddy bears to fake things that were sitting around and when I got to university and I had no teddy bears I would just teach it to like the blank wall just because actually vocalizing and actually saying it as simply as possible really helps just try it and see how it goes okay and then the last method and this may be one that you might have heard of or might not have heard of is the SQ3R method this sounds for survey question read recite and review and this method really helps because it means that when you're reading text, you're engaging with it at a, you know, on a deeper level. So you're not just reading the text um, or your, you know, your, your information, you're not just reading it and just at a surface level, you're engaging with it before you start reading and then when you read and also after you read as well. So you're not just reading the words, but you're actually understanding the concept and what's being said at a much deeper level. And this is where the first class sort of thinking comes from. So the first one is survey, which is the S, and this is where you're skimming. You're just reading over what you've got in front of you. So let's say we have a research paper in front of you. You just want to skim it. So you just want to say, right, okay, we've got an introduction there. Okay, cool, got some figures there that's coming up. Um, the reference is quite long. Okay, we have a introduction. The title is this, and it's just a quick skim. Quick skim to analyze the text to just see what is coming up. That is a first step, so you have an understanding of what's to come. The second point is question, and this is where you actually interrogate the text. So as you're reading, you're asking questions. So you're not just blanketly reading um, a, this research paper, you're saying, okay, these are the methods, why did they do that? Okay, this is the cell type they used, why did they use that? Okay, this is the statistical analysis that they used, why did they not use a different? So you're constantly asking questions, and if you don't know the answer to those questions, you can highlight that as you're reading, put question marks, and that was that is a kind of precedent for you to come back and check. And that could actually form part of a critical discussion. Then comes the three R's. The first one is reading, and this is where you actually read. Um, so obviously the first one was where you skimmed, um, the second one was where you start to ask questions, and the third one is where you actually get to the reading and you actually engage in reading. Then the third, the fourth, <laughs> the fourth one is R, which is recite. And this is where you start to recite answers to your questions. So you've done your reading, you've got some questions, some thinking, some thoughts, and now you're reciting those answers out loud to yourself um, for those questions. And you're, this is like, you're constantly interrogating the text. And then last but definitely not least is the review. So here is where you review what you've read, you review your questions, you review your answers, you review everything all together and you get a good understanding of what you've read. Now this can be used at such at a really low level. So even if you're like a GCSE student, you can use this technique for reading your texts 
um, for English literature, for example, for geography, for, for even for science when you're reading like small paragraphs of information within your exams, this can be really useful. So just skimming it, understanding what's to come, asking questions, and then kind of answering those questions and reviewing it as you go along really helps. But you can also use this technique very well at university level when you're reading research papers, um, when you're trying to write a literature review, when you're trying to write a dissertation, um, or like a reflection piece, these help so much as well. I hope you were able to pick something out from these three techniques and help kind of add something, a bit of variety to your revision style. Remember that you don't have to just sit there and highlight that is not the only way of learning, that is not the only way of revising. There are a plethora of different ways of studying that may suit you and it's just up to you to try them and see which works best for you. If you have any questions or if you want to know anything else, don't forget to leave it in my comments box down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.